Welcome to the surgical technique demonstration using the new coated BioI hydroxyapatite implant produced by Integrated Orbital Implants of San Diego, California. I'm Dr. Art Perry and I'll be demonstrating my surgical techniques using this new coated BioI implant. I think you'll find the implant easy to use and I hope these suggestions will help to make your surgery go smoothly. First, let me discuss the reasons this new coated implant was developed. It was developed for the patient with a surgeon and surgical techniques in mind. It's the most scientifically advanced and medically engineered orbital implant in the world. The core of the new coated implant is still coralline derived hydroxyapatite, the gold standard in orbital implant materials. As you may know, hydroxyapatite is the inorganic or mineral portion of human bone and therefore the most natural, biocompatible, and most bioactive material you can have. Other materials like silicone, acrylic, polyethylene, and aluminum oxide are not naturally occurring in the body. The microarchitecture of the BioI implant has the same complete 100% interconnected pores, like that of human cancellous bone. The microarchitecture of man-made porous materials, like porous polyethylene or porous aluminum oxide, are not completely interconnected and have blind end passages and pores that don't connect with other pores. With the same BioI hydroxyapatite implant as the core, the goal was to create an implant with a smooth, ultra-thin, absorbable coating. This coating would make the implant completely smooth so it could be easily placed deep in the orbit. The coating would be such that the surgeon could attach the extraocular muscles to it and therefore no wrapping material would be needed. The essential feature of the new implant is the polymer coating. There are actually two distinctly different polymer coatings that cover the implant. These two polymers have different absorption rates that have been specifically engineered and tested for orbital implant surgery. The two polymers are color-coded to indicate their location in the orbit. The amber or pinkish colored hemisphere should be placed anteriorly in the orbit. Remember the A in amber and the A in anterior. This would be the surface closest to the conjunctiva. This polymer was designed to be reabsorbed slowly over 15 to 18 months. The polymer that covers the posterior portion of the implant is colored purple or bluish gray. Remember the P in purple and the P in posterior. The posterior surface of the implant should be placed deepest in the orbit toward the orbital apex. This polymer allows rapid fibrovascular ingrowth because it will be reabsorbed over six to eight weeks. The implant is supplied in a sterile box with a special foil pouch. It should be stored at room temperature or cooler. Now let me discuss the techniques I use when inserting the coated BioI implant in an enucleation, evisceration, or as a secondary implant. Once the standard enucleation has been done, with the muscles tagged with a double arm 50 vicral suture, the socket is sized using sizing spheres. Select the largest size implant that when placed deep into the orbit can be covered without tension. The rings on the sizing spheres help locate the approximate location of the muscle windows. Keep the largest sizing sphere in the socket while the implant is being prepared. This helps keep the socket from swelling and helps keep the space open for the implant. The appropriate sized implant is chosen and the apex or the center of the amber pinkish or the anterior surface is marked with a sterile marking pin. The location of the windows is marked in relation to this apex. The windows are then drawn. The size is generally 5 mm horizontally and 4 mm in the anterior posterior direction. A small mark is made at each end of each window, two millimeters anterior to the anterior edge of the window. This is the location for the suture needle exit.
Whole locations are then marked in the posterior purple or bluish gray polymer near the apex. Eight to 30 holes are made in this area. These holes will be for the outflow of the antibiotic and local anesthetic mixture from inside the implant into the orbit. The anterior surface or the amber colored surface is quite tough and would be difficult to cut the muscle windows using a scalpel and scissors. The best way to create the muscle windows and suture holes is to use a fine tipped, high temperature, battery powered handheld cautery. Use the fine hot tip to cut along the outline of the muscle windows. Cut along the inside of the markings because the cautery will tend to make the windows slightly larger. Remove the piece of polymer inside the window with forceps. Once the windows have been created, an important technique used to make the passage of the suture needle easier is to create a tunnel or tract from the suture exit hole to the muscle window using a 21 or 25 gauge hypodermic needle. Simply place the point of the needle in the suture exit hole and while twisting the needle, push it toward the corner of the muscle window. Angle the needle toward the implant to avoid breaking the bridge of polymer between the exit hole and the window. Use a trial needle like the one attached to the sutures that have been used to tag the muscles to verify the needle track. I use a S14 quarter circle spatula needle. Pass the needle from the muscle window to the suture exit hole, hugging the underside of the coating. You may need to break a few spicules of hydroxyapatite as you do this. Pass the trial needle through each of the suture exit holes to assure easy passage of the needle that is tagged to each of the rectus muscles. After the windows and holes have been made, the easy passage of the trial needle has been verified. The implant is then saturated with an antibiotic and local anesthetic mixture. I use 2 cc's of gentamicin. 80 milligrams per 2 cc's, and 10 to 15 cc's of 0.75% marcaine, or enough marcaine to cover the implant well. Place the implant in a large syringe, a 35 cc or 60 cc syringe, depending on the size of the implant you've chosen. Place your finger over the tip of the syringe and cover the implant with the antibiotic and local anesthetic solution. Place the plunger back into the syringe and hold the syringe in an upright position and push all the air out of the syringe. Again, cover the tip of the syringe with your finger and pull back on the plunger. This will create a vacuum and pull all the air out of the implant and the space occupied by the air will be replaced by the solution. This provides a large bolus of antibiotic and local anesthetic into the orbit when the implant is inserted. This volume of local anesthesia is a great help in reducing the discomfort postoperatively. After taking the implant out of the syringe in preparation for placing it in the orbit, do not put it on an absorbent towel or drape because this will pull some of the solution out of the implant. Place it on a non-absorbent material. Place the implant in the orbit with the orientation in the proper direction, amber anterior, purple posterior. Because the surface is smooth, the coated implant will slide into the orbit easily. Attach the rectus muscles to the respective windows. 
closed Tenon's capsule carefully with interrupted 5 vicral suture, and then closed the conjunctiva in a separate layer using the same suture material. These techniques are the same for a secondary orbital implant after the extraocular muscles have been isolated. In an evisceration, muscle windows may or may not be made in the anterior amber-colored polymer, and more holes are made in the posterior or purple-colored polymer. In conclusion, this new coded BioEye hydroxyapatite orbital implant offers the patient the best orbital implant material available and offers the surgeon a completely smooth implant that is easily placed in the orbit, an implant that requires no wrapping material, an implant surfaced to which the muscles can be attached. The scientifically designed absorption rates of the two polymers allows quick absorption posteriorly for rapid vascular ingrowth and slow absorption anteriorly to prevent the possibility of exposure. Give your patient the best implant that science and technology has to offer. They deserve it because the quality of the surgery you perform will have such a great impact on the quality of life your patient will enjoy.